Hello, sports fans. My name is Mark Mortia from Yesterday Sports. You're about to jump into another thrilling sports history moment. But first, let's dive into today's sponsor, just in time for the holiday season. Introducing Art of Words, the brainchild of word artist Dan Duffy from Philadelphia. Dan meticulously crafts stunning images by hand writing relevant words from some of the greatest sports moments in time. These unique, budget-friendly illustrations are the perfect gift, sparking cherished memories and capturing hearts. Choose from city skylines, sports, history, and musicians to find a piece for everyone. And here's the exciting part. For that sports fanatic in your life, Gift them a piece of their favorite team or player's history. Art of Words tells a compelling story. Explore collegiate stadiums, each meticulously crafted with every football victory etched in words. Or venture into baseball stadiums, handwritten with every player from the team's illustrious history. Don't wait. Order a print today for yourself and your loved ones this holiday season. Transform your wall into a gallery of captivating art and surprise your family and friends with a print of their own. Use code SHN15 at artofwords.com for a 15% discount on your order in November and December. Visit Art of Words, where words magically transform into stunning art, evoking cherished memories and touching the hearts of those you care about. Again, use the code SHN15 for 15% off at partofwords.com. Hello, everybody, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You know, whenever you're looking, listen to this. Oh, one guy here wanted to say... Welcome back to the show. I know it's been a couple weeks, but hey, you know, sometimes a guy just needs a break. Um, Also on good news is that, well, I shouldn't say, good news for me, um, and I think you guys are going to like it too. Uh, I'm going to, over the last two weeks, I've thought about the this podcast and where I want it to go and where I feel comfortable with and where I'll feel happy with about it as well. Um, so I'm no longer, well, I shouldn't say no longer doing current takes. I'm going to do some current takes still. Um, they're just not going to be weekly current takes. Uh, we're going to turn this, I'm going to turn my podcast or turn, you know, turn the podcast into a, sports history podcast um and we're gonna and i'm gonna concentrate on the two sports that i love the most baseball and basketball those are the two sports that i love the most um i'm gonna do some history pieces on it you know we're gonna talk about old players history of leagues just a whole whole plethora of things going on um and like compare players you know in some debates that are going on uh, because the thing that i really love to do is to research stats like that's you know that's why i say i bring the stats so you can state the facts like that that's where that's where i'm at um i i have also had a chance to speak with a sports history network is what it's, i've the i should say not a should say the sports history network um and basically it's a group of podcasts that are, that work together to celebrate sports history um i've reached out to them and i'm going to be doing some and uh they we had a 40 minute conversation on uh you know 40 minutes conversation and it sounds and it sounds everything went well so 
Sounds like I'll be joining that and be able to collaborate with other podcasters on sports history. Um, now, it's not going to change where you find me. Uh, you're still going to be able to listen to me on Spotify, you know, listen to me where you listen to me at. Um, the just difference is, is that I'll be able to expand what I'm doing here instead of just by myself. I'll be able to expand with a group of a group of people. So looking forward to that. That's going to be a huge change, um, but I think it's going to be a great change as well, especially for um, where I want this podcast to go, what I want to do with it overall. So that's how my week's going. Um, hope your week is going well. Um, the so uh, Marvel movies comes out this week. I'm looking forward to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse. I'm a huge Marvel nerd, uh, the, so that's going to be that's exciting. I'm actually right now watching all the Marvel movies in timeline order, um, which has been a lot of fun. So especially when you look at, especially when you look at the movies and you're like, and you're watching them in timeline order, so not how they were released, but how they are and how they come along in the timeline and it's just like wow how did like they just made it work so well that it's just that you can watch captain marvel and then iron man that came out in 2021 and then iron man one which came out in 20 2008 and they you still like get it intertwined even though you watch captain marvel first so it's crazy it's crazy how well that series is um and like i said i'm a huge marvel nerd so that's one of my things. Uh, Thor and Hulk are my two favorite superheroes on that. I mean, well, you really can't call Thor a superhero because he's the Norse god of thunder and lightning. So that's pretty sweet. Norse is just, Thor is just badass. So. All right. A little, oh, also checked out Sonic 2. That's a great movie. If you need to check that out, it's awesome. Um, funny thing about Sonic 2 is as I so I took the 15 year old to um to to it and we're halfway through it and I hear this really loud sucking noise out of the corner of my ear or, or out of the uh, out of my left side and there was little kids behind me and they just kept sucking on the soda that had no soda left and that's like one of my biggest pet peeves because it's the most annoying sound in the world and I'm sure you can hear it now in your head because I can. And I wanted to just turn around and say, here's my soda, kid. Like, you know, <laughs> not be like an asshole or, you know, or mean like that. But just one of those things of, here, like, just stop making the noise, please. Like, I got you, bro. Like that. So we're in the car ride home and I'm telling my 14-year-old this and we're, and he goes, uh yeah that was me and i'm like what oh my god because he knows it's one of my biggest pet peeves so that's a little bit funny i about went off on a seven-year-old not really went off on a seven-year-old but it was really my 15 year old making noise so that's always fun uh also uh streaming a little bit more um actually got on the stream the last two weeks for at least one time i did it last friday or i did it two fridays ago and then we just did it this past thursday so if you get on twitch follow me um i've been trying to stream i like to stream at night but the problem is is that i stream in in my living room and everybody's trying to sleep and i'm loud i am the loudest guy ever so got a big mouth you know that whole deal so i've been streaming during the day um a little bit here and there um but definitely go on twitch it's one guy with a mic sportscast uh, and i th and so then we're gonna and you can watch me play baseball on there and talk about a, a whole lot of lives if you if you don't get enough of me talking here and you need to hear my voice more and maybe see my face definitely go to twitch um, I'm going to be on there at least once a week for a while until I can figure out a schedule to be on there a little bit more. So, again, I appreciate everybody for listening. And as always, this is this is where it's at. This is this is the fun this is the fun time. So, let's get into today's episode. This week's episode, shall we? 
This one's got a lot of debate out there. I see it everywhere. It's not Babe Ruth can hit, if Babe Ruth can hit now or not. It's not. By the way, I did see on TikTok. So one of the guys, I, one of the, my friends on TikTok, uh, Mike Dro, and he's, uh, he's a streamer, and he put, um, he put on there about Manuel Clay's pitching to Babe Ruth, and some kid goes, <laughs> he, it's something like, uh, I can't remember what the exact TikTok video was, but the kid was like, Babe Ruth would be questioning why this guy's allowed to pitch to him. Like, that's savage, man, because really, think about it, like, Babe Ruth, back in the, you know, 20s, 30s, he he only played against uh, Negro League teams, you know, he only played against uh, black players when they would barnstorm, that was it, never in the big leagues, so, but that's again, something that, see, it's that history of this game that I really want to get into, baseball, basketball, like, there's so much history there. Um, that not everybody knows about. So that's what I wanted to like dive into. And that's why I'm going to the history part because of that right there. So, all right. You ready for it? Here it is. LeBron versus Jordan. Everybody has their take. And actually my buddy Sal had a great take. Uh, his take was, if you grew up watching Jordan, Jordan's the GOAT. If you grew up watching LeBron, LeBron's the GOAT. And I think there's some... I, I really think that there's some... Uh, some... Some valid... Some valid... A valid point to that. Is if you grew up watching Jordan, like, you're... And you're a huge Jordan fan. Um, you're definitely going to watch Jordan. Have Jordan listed as the GOAT. If you grew up in, I mean, and you, you could even be like, I don't know, I'd say late 80s, early 90s, even those kids, late 80s, early 90s, kids born in late 1980s, early 1990s, you're not, you may have grew up with Jordan, but you don't remember him playing, you remember LeBron playing. Like, I was born in 82, I don't really remember Bird, Magic, you know, Bird and Magic, or Irving playing, but I remember Jordan playing, because that's where in... He was, that's when your cognizant, you know, memory actually pops in. So, I went into this, I, first of all, a little, little context here. I, I'm a Jordan guy. Um, I'm not a Jordan guy per se, like, oh yeah, there, there's no question about it. He's the GOAT. No, because there's always been, to me... Jordan's Jordan was a transformational was a general generational player. Jordan was a generational game changer that of what he had to do. Okay. Um LeBron same way. LeBron's a generational player. He can't change the game of how it's played. Like LeBron and Matt see and to me LeBron is like magic but Magic's not as good as LeBron. So, there's that. Um, and then, again, as a, and even as a kid, I wasn't even a Bulls fan of the 90s. Like, everybody's got Bulls posters in their rooms. I had Knicks and Hornets because I was a huge Larry Johnson fan. Like, Larry Johnson's my guy. Um, and that that's... I always wore number two because of Larry Johnson... Um, if I played baseball, I always wanted to be 23 because of Ryan Sandberg, the original 23 of Chicago. Um, and that's, that's just how it is. Like Larry Johnson was, was the guy that I, I remember first seeing. And I remember seeing him at the slam dunk contest when he won it. That's, that's when I remember Larry Johnson. I was like, I also loved the Celtics and I mean, I was even a Clippers fan. Like, I just generally, as a kid, loved basketball. And so, I didn't... So, I've never been, like... Like, I have my favorite team. Favorite team is the Clippers. My favorite team for the Clippers has been long ago. I'm talking about... I'm talking about when they had uh, Voorhees or Vaughn. They had Vaughn and they had Pooh Richardson and 
right after the Danny Manning era, like drafting Michael Ola Candy number one, Lamar Odom, Darius Miles, Quentin Richardson, like that's that's the Clippers fan I'm from. And I get a lot of people say, well, you're just a Clippers fan because of Lob City. Like, no, like, for real, like, I've been a Clippers fan for, uh, but since the 90s, man, like, that's been my team. Yes, I have, I picked the losing teams, apparently, because I'm a Raiders fan. They haven't won anything since 83. Uh, Cubs fan. I spent so many years being having losses with the Cubs. It was ridiculous that they finally won one in 2016, and I was just all over again, as you've know from my previous podcast. Um, I just and then you have the, the Clippers. I'm like, yeah, so yeah, like really don't have a hockey team. I mean, I follow like like I used to watch hockey or not really watch hockey. Like I played NHL '95 on Sega Genesis, and that and Detroit was my team. It's Steve Uy and Sir and Fedorov and Coffee and all those guys right there. I mean that that was that was the that was my team on NHL ninety five. So I don't really don't have a have a team. But so back to the Jordan debate. Like I bought Jordan shoes as a kid because they're sweet. Like I love Jordan shoes. Uh, I still buy a pair every now and then. Now I have a Jordan backpack. Like. Jordan's a brand. Jordan was the first player to actually get a shoe deal off his name and actually create his own brand. That's that's what Jordan did. And then he wanted then everybody after him wanted their own shoe deal and they wanted their own shoe after him because that's what you do. Like that's what that's what you had to be doing. So that's that's how that's how I see Jordan. Um and I, like I said, I wasn't a huge Jordan fan. Like everybody else could be Jordan, that's fine. I wanted to be. I I loved power forwards. Um, like I said, Larry Johnson was my favorite player. Dennis Rodman loved Dennis Rodman. Loved Charles Barkley. Um, I loved loved the big guys, and I played guard. So there's that. <laughs> um, and then you have LeBron. Okay, so on LeBron, you have. He was the chosen one out of high school. So he has all his media hype behind him. So Jordan didn't have the hype coming in didn't have the hype coming into the NBA, right? Jordan didn't have that hype. Jordan won an NCAA championship. He was the freshman on that team. Um then he spends two more years at UNC. Then he gets should have been drafted number two instead of three, but Portland's an idiot, so that's whatever. Okay. Then so then you move on to so then he gets in in the NBA and he pretty much has to carry the team the first three years. He makes the playoffs every single year, but that's because there was what, like 19 teams. I mean, it was, it wasn't that many teams in at, at that time when Jordan came in the league. Right. I mean, if you look at Jordan's career, he was his um if you look at it jordan when jordan came in the league in uh 1985 84 85 season okay so let's see yep 84 85 season there wasn't that many teams in in the league Right, I mean, you didn't have you had you had four divisions, basically what you had, and a total of teams you had eleven and twelve. So you had twenty three teams in the league when Jordan came to the league. Now what do we have? Thirty two. So yeah, I mean that's the difference of things that happen as well and it's just one of those things that grow with the basketball so then jordan was in the expansion era and then now you have lebron playing in this area where era where these ball players are these basketball players are ungodly good like and we're gonna get deep into those numbers but so there's some knocks on jordan some knocks on lebron but we're gonna solve those and we're gonna get into it right now all right 
So let's do let's do a little rules because that's going to be argument number one. Well, the rules were different back back between Jordan and back in Jordan's era than LeBron's. Okay. So one of the rules that changed in 1992, so it really would <clears throat> wouldn't been that crucial, is that the shot clock is reset only when the ball hits the rim. Up to this point, the if the ball either hit the rim or the backboard, the shot clock always reset. So, that gives an offensive possession off a bad off just a rebound off that backboard more more time. So that's a few more shot attempts for Jordan, right? Okay. Um and then he wasn't a three point then he had three shots award ninety four he had three shots award for a foul on a three point attempt. Uh, three point line shortened to twenty two for a year for three years, and then was moved back to twenty three nine. Except in the corners, where it's still twenty two. Okay, a no charge area was established in ninety seven, and that's it. Okay, so realistically, not a lot. Now in two thousand and one, here's where the I think this is. So this is where the well, if Jordan played now, he could score sixty. Uh, not true because. Back in the 80s and 90s, they had to play man defense. That's all they were allowed was man defense. So if Jordan beat his guy he and you had your offense spaced off far enough, if you had your offense spaced out far enough, you could easily have an open lane and get to the bucket, okay? And Jordan never initiated contact as well as a player, neither. Um, so now... In 2001, the elite, the illegal defense was eliminated and the zone defense was allowed. And then they instituted the defensive three-second rule, which pro- prohibits a defensive player from being in the lane without guarding a defensive player. So, basically what that means, as long as I'm outside the... I don't even have to be really guarding a player. As long as... If I'm on the weak side, so the ball... So, if I'm in a court and the ball's on the right side and as the defensive center... I'm on the weak side defense, which means I'm on the opposite side, opposite side of the court. Okay, if that player, and we're playing a zone defense, if that player gets past the zone, I can then step up and block and stop that. And I don't have to worry about that guy. I don't have to be on that guy over there. So that's a huge thing, um, and that's why. And zone defense is really one of the reasons why you have more outside shooters now is because they're cramming the paint and you're not able to get to the paint fast enough so that way you have to shoot more threes. Okay? Also, when LeBron came in the league, there was 29 teams. There is now 30 teams in the league. Um, And so, yeah, so you have more players however that doesn't mean like the competition has dwindled any because the competition has gotten more fierce um you still have your bottom dwelling teams but it's not like so yeah so let's get those knocks out of the way right now okay now let's just go right down the let's go down the list okay finals record jordan six and oh lebron four and six finals mvp jordan six times lebron's four times all stars, fourteen and eighteen. Each of them won a rookie of the year. MVP, Jordan's got five, LeBron's got four. All defensive teams, Jordan's nine, LeBron's six. So you can't even really say LeBron's bad on defense. They both were on the all all rookie team, both on the NBA seventy five anniversary team. Scoring champ, Jordan's ten, LeBron's one. Whatever. Like I, I under, we all know Jordan's the most prolific scorer in the NBA. Hands down, and that's only because I'm telling you right now. Uh, I'm you, and the the proofs in the pudding here is that uh, it's uh, the and we're gonna get to that more about LeBron too because I came into this with an open mind. You know, everybody's like, "Oh, you can't do this because you're a favorite Jordan." Well, I came in with an open mind, and it's uh, and I think that's one of the biggest things you have to do is you have to look at it with an open mind. Okay. They both they've been a three time All Star MVP. Jordan's got a Defensive Player of the Year in eighty seven eighty eight. Uh, he's led the league in steals in three times, and LeBron's 
had led the league in assist once. Uh, All-NBA, Jordan was an All-NBA 11 out of 15 years, while LeBron was 17 out of 18. Now, this number is a little screwed. A little screwed, but that's what we're going with overall. Career win shares, 214 to 249.5. Okay. Highest win share total for one year was 21.2 by Jordan and 20.3 by LeBron. Okay. Most 15 plus one year share seasons, uh, Jordan had 10 and LeBron had seven. Now, win shares is how many games the team won with you on the, how many games you contributed to the team winning out of the games played. That's pretty much what it is. Um, it's a one for one thing in baseball. It's like the, it's, they got a different, um, mathematic program for that than here. All right. Than what basketball does. All right. So the lower win share total, lowest win share total was 3.3. I threw out Jordan's 18 game season. Um, he was a one something on that year, but, uh, his lowest for a full season would have been, uh, 2001, 2002. So basically I think his last year. And then you got LeBron. No, I think Jordan played one more year. Um, so yeah, then you got LeBron at 5.1 and that was his rookie year. So career defensive win shares, Jordan's got 64.1 and LeBron's at a 75.6 career offensive win shares. 149.9 and LeBron's a 173.9. Yeah. Now, granted, LeBron's played longer. I get that. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Usage. We got Jordan's a 33.3 while LeBron's a 31.6. Assist percentage. Jordan passed the ball 24.9% of the time. LeBron passes at 36.4% of the time. True shooting percentage, which is basically free throws, two pointers. I like true shooting because it incorporates all of it so you got field goals you got your free throws and your three points so as a true shooter jordan was a 56.9 percent shooter lebron's 58.8 three point percentage 7.2 23 percent because you know that's how it is i think that's wrong i don't maybe i don't know okay a little throw that one out we're not gonna worry about the three-point thing We'll just toss that one out. All right. So then you got free throws per field goal attempt. So Jordan got to the line 35.8% of the time. LeBron gets to the line almost 40% to the line at 39.8. Then you got your VORP, which is your value over replacement player. Okay. Now the replacement player. See, I did a lot of digging on this. This is 14 hours of research people that I'm going to try to get to get into a probably about an hour podcast. <laughs> So it's going to be quack fast and it's going to be right at you. We're just getting straight to it. So VORP is value of over replacement. Okay. So a replacement player in the NBA is a minus two. That means that you're a end of the bench player. Okay. If you're, if you get to the, so from minus one to minus two, you're pr- pretty much not in the rotation. Minus one to zero, you're, you're end of the rotation type of guy. Then you got, Zero to one, you're a sixth man. One to two, you're a starter. Two to four is like an, I don't know, it's like an all-star. And then anything above that, it's like Jordan LeBron status. Superstar. You're a superstar. Okay? Something like that. That's that's basically how it, how it works. Okay? So, I broke down all of this. All of it. This is crazy. This is just crazy how, how much I broke down. Okay, so there's argument number one is, well, argument number one's Jordan's got more rings than LeBron. I'm sorry, but throw the rings out. I don't really care about rings. Well, Jordan's got more finals than between LeBron. Okay, I can live with that. However, you want to know something? Uh, most finals MVPs are awarded to the winner. So, the winning team usually gets the finals MVP, right? So, Jordan in the 19, so 
okay, so a little back, also a little backstory on this is that uh, there's a metric called game score. Okay, it's not totally accurate because it doesn't it leaves out some defensive stuff. Uh, so, yeah, so game score leaves out some of the like some of the small things you do on defense. It doesn't pick up. It only picks up what you do in the box score. So for the finals, that's what I went off with as a game score because most of the time that's where it's going to be at. Um, and ten is an average player, and forty is the max points that you can get. Okay, and then twenty to thirty is that Le- they have that LeBron Jordan range, basically, is what they call it. Basically, twenty to twenty-five, anything above twenty-five, like, is nuts. So, I used Game Score, I used VORP, and I used Win Shares. Those are going to be the three metrics for basketball I found out in this research that can tell you the most about a player, because basketball is so interchangeable that you can't really do a war like you do in baseball. Like you can just look at somebody's war and say, Oh yeah, that's his wins above replacement. And realistically war and you gotta have a little bit of the eye test too. I understand the eye the eye the eye test, the you have to pass the eye test as well. I get that. But war, VORP, win shares, game score, they all line up with the eye test from what I'm seeing. Now is someone else might not be able to might contradict that but that's fine with me like that's why i'm doing this like come at me bro i dare you find me on twitter we'll have a great conversation so game scores all right let's and i really focused on the playoff and one more thing between jordan and lebron we really need to focus more on their teammates did they make the teammates better or were their teammates already good? Let's go that route. Who benefited the most from their roster? Okay. Then, um, to me, playoffs matter more than regular season. Okay. Like, get to the playoffs. That's where your truly greatness is going to come out in the playoffs. Right? We all can agree on that. Greatness is going to come out in the playoffs. I do believe that as well. So, let's go with that as well. Like, let's break down that. And let's also put into perspective here that, yes, Jordan... So, Jordan made the playoffs every single year of his career. Okay? Even when he came back in 95 and played part of the season, they still made the playoffs. So, Jordan made... And... So, Jordan made the playoffs every single year of, of his career. LeBron has missed the playoffs... Uh, he missed the playoffs in his rookie year, his second year. Then he missed the playoffs again in 2019 and 2022. So LeBron's missed the playoffs four times. Okay. Which I don't really think is a knock against him, but we can get into that as well. And that's where... so. I mean, realistically, yeah. So, like, the year that, let's take, for instance, let's go with Jordan's first year, okay? Jordan's first year, he makes the playoffs, okay? The Bulls' record that year is 38-44, and 44, okay? In that playoff series against the Bucks, they lost 3-1. Jordan played two against two All-Stars, Cummings, Terry Cummings, and City Moncrief, okay? They were the seventh seed. Jordan averaged 29.3, 5.8 rebounds, 8.5 assists, 2.8 steals, and he averaged one block. Okay? That was his first playoff series. Now, in the 86 playoffs, this is when Jordan played 18 games and the team went 9-9 nine and nine with him in the league, with him on the floor. Okay? The Bulls made the playoffs at a thir- with a 30-52 and 52 record. 30 and 52 record is what he made the playoffs in in 1986. Won against the Celtics, played against three All Stars, Bird, McHale, and Parrish. Now, this is the series that the Celtics basically said, We're going to let Jordan score all the points, and you're still not going to beat us. And they were right, because the Celtics won 3 0, 
and Jordan averaged 43.7 points a game is 6.3 rebounds, 5.7 assists, and 2.3 steals and 1.3 blocks. So, yeah. So, basically, that's what happened. Is the Celtics let him basically let Jordan do his thing. The 87 playoffs. So, the 87 playoffs. Jordan made it as a 40 and 42. The Celtics did it again. Okay? He played the same three All-Stars. Because here's here's another argument that you have. Is that they say, well, Jordan played against all these Hall of Famers and All-Stars. Okay. I get the Hall of Fame issue. However, you can't say LeBron's play who who's making the Hall of Fame out of the years LeBron's played because they're not all done playing yet. Like, that's a problem. So, I went off All-Stars. How many All-Stars did you play against? If you played against the same All-Stars every single year, guess what? That counted as one group of All-Stars. Whether you made the All-Stars in 86 or the and then also made the All-Star team in 87, it's still the same three guys that made All-Stars. I'm not counting you twice. Everybody else is going to. I'm not because they want to boost some stats. Whatever. So, 87 playoffs, Celtics won 3-0. Bulls make the playoffs at a 40-42 and record. So... Jordan's first three years, he's won 108 games. Okay? Keep that in mind. Then he averaged this series, it was 35 7, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals, and 2.3 blocks per game. So, he there's that. All right? Then the 88 playoffs, he beat the Cavs, and then he loses the Detroit. And the semifinals, he played against. Two All-Stars that series, Brad Daughtry and Isaiah Thomas. Still averaged, you know, he averaged 45, 5, 4, 2, and 1 against the Cavs. And then 27, 8, 4, and 2 against the, and point six against the Detroit Pistons. So, yes. So, Jordan, at this point, is scoring a lot of points and his teams aren't winning games. So, but he has no other help because... His teammates, his best teammates in those first seasons are, oh, let me, so Jordan's teammates those years was Orlando Woolridge in 84 and 85. He had nine wins, a nine win share, okay, and a 2.5 vort. Everybody else was negative 0.1, 0.4. Minus point one, minus point two. You had the next highest win share total was Steve Johnson with a three point one. And I know you guys never heard of Steve Johnson, because I never heard of Steve Johnson until now either. <laughs> Alright? And then eighty five eighty six, when Jordan played eighteen games, he still had a win share of one point four and his VORP was still one point three. Again, his best teammate was Orlando Woolridge at five point six and two point three. And then you had Gene Banks at 4.3 and 1.5. Everybody else was below that on the VORP scale. Like you had 0. 0.9, 0. 0.7, 0, 1.1, a minus, and a zero. Like, so you had rotation guys. Like he never had that second player. Okay, 86, 87. Jordan's second best teammate, or Jordan's best teammate was John Paxson. He had a six win share and a 0. 0.4 VORP. Like, <laughs> he's a starting guard <laughs> when he shouldn't be starting. He doesn't fall in that starting category. Oh, yeah. Or Dave Corzine at a point nine and Banks at a point four. Okay. And then in 87, 88. So 87, 88, they go 50 and 32. Okay. So they go 50 and 32. It's the. Uh, that's when they they beat the Cavs, and that's when they lose to Detroit. Okay, and on that team, Jordan had it was Jordan, Oakley, Corzine, Paxson, Grant, Brad Sellers, Scottie Pippen, and Sam Vincent. Okay, so Jordan had uh, win shares of twenty one point two. And a, tw- and a 12.5 VORP. Okay? 
Now, if you want to translate VORP into uh, wins, if you want to chant, chant, change it to wins above replacement, like you have in baseball, what you do is you take the VORP, take, so Jordan's 12.5 times 2.7. And you get 33. So he accounted for 33 games is what he accounted for. 33 games is what he was above a replacement player. But again, you really can't do that in basketball because it's all interchangeable and everything else. And blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's not, it doesn't work that well. It doesn't work the way you want it to work like you do in baseball. So you have to just take VORP as it is and then be that, done with that. So again... He has a couple starters with him and then a bunch of rotation players. Okay? And he, they get to 50 and 32. But in... And then... So, and then with... So, basically, what you do is then you take... So, playoff-wise, you still can use Vort, but it's a little more condensed because it's not as many games. It's, it's just... It's crazy. So, then, 88-89, this is the... Second year with Jordan, Pippen, Paxson, and Grant on the team. Okay? So this is year number two. 89, they beat the Cavs, who were 57 and 25. They beat the Knicks, who were 52 and 30. He also played against, you know, two other All-Stars, Price and Larry Nance Sr. Um, so, yeah. And then this series, so this is where it is. So the 89 playoffs, so this is where Jordan takes a huge leap on his assists. Okay, so before he's been averaging, what, 4.6, 5.4, or 4.8, um, 6. So not a whole lot of assists this Okay, so this year, he takes a huge leap in passing the ball. So against the Cavs, he scored 39.8 points. He had 5.8 rebounds, 8.2 assists. He averaged three steals and .4 blocks. Against the Knicks, he averaged 35.7, a 9.5, 8.3, a 2.5, and a 1.3. And then against Detroit, it was 29.7 and a 5.5 and a 6.5 and a 2.0 and a half a block. Okay, His teammates that year was Jordan, Grant, Pippen, and Paxson. Hodges, Sellers. Sam Vincent and Bill Cartwright. So this is the team, the, the the fighting, the starting five: Jordan, Grant, Pippen, Paxson, and Cartwright. Those five are the ones that actually go on to be the starters for the championship team. So this is their first year together. Okay, and they went and they go forty-seven and thirty-five. Jordan had a nineteen point eight win share. Grant had a six point four. Pippen had a four point zero. Now I'm going to tell you guys. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of knowledge. Drop a little knowledge on this whole podcast is one thing I did find out that I didn't realize. Well, I mean, I saw it with the eye test because me, Scotty Pippen, didn't pass the eye test as a kid. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, he's the best. No, Horace Grant was by far Jordan's best teammate. Horace Grant was by far Jordan's best teammate for three, four years, five years. Pippen didn't get good. Get good. Jeez. Get good, kid. Uh, Pippen didn't become Pippen until after Jordan left. And then when Jordan came back, all he did was fill in the roles, but we're not there yet. So you have Jordan at a 9.8, 19.8, and then, okay, and Grant, so there's that. And then we got in the playoffs, Jordan was a four-win share and a 2.5 VORP. While Grant was a 1.6 and a 0.3, and Pippen stepped up a little bit, but he was still only accounted for 1.3 win shares and a 0.8 VORP. So he still wasn't like, he was still a starter. They're both starters at that point. And yeah. Now, 89 90, they go 55 and 27. Again, it's Jordan and Grant at the top two, and way ahead of Pippen. Like, Grant is, has separated himself out from Pippen. Even in the playoffs. In the 89-90 playoffs, Grant plays better than Pippen. Oh, I guess the, yeah, so 89-90. Yeah, 89-90 playoffs. Grant plays better than Pippen. So in the 90 playoffs, they beat the Bucks, Philly, and then they lose to Detroit again. Okay? So, so let's see. 
85, the Bucks didn't win the championship. 86, Celtics, I think, won the championship that year, and I think they won in 87 as well. 88, Detroit lost to the Lakers. 89, Detroit won. 90, Detroit won. And then 91, so here you get to 91, and Pippen has kind of made the step over Grant, but not much. So you have Jordan with a 20.3 win share. Okay, so this team went 61 and 21. Now, Jordan had a 20.3 win share. So Jordan's win share is kind of coming down, not a whole lot. I mean, still around the 20 range. So he's still your best player in the regular season. Then you got Pippen and Grant, and then it's a huge fall off from there with Paxson and Cartwright. But at this point, Paxson is a 1.1 VORP, so he's actually a starter now. Grant's a 3.1. Pippen's a 5.9. So you got all-star. So basically you have all-star potential with both of those guys. And then you got Jordan, who's a 10.8 board. Just outstanding. So, and then they beat the Knicks, which won 39 games that year. Jordan had 29, 4, 6. So, and even, oh, in the 90 playoffs, Jordan averaged 36, 43, and 32 for points. And he had seven, seven, and six assists. So again, he's averaging a thirty, a thirty plus point. So at this point, Jordan still is doing it all and lifting his teammates as well. As you can tell by Scottie Pippen's getting better. Okay, so Jordan brought Pippen along. Grant was already good. Like Grant, what came into the league busting. So then you have, so then you got the '91 playoffs. They beat the Lakers. Jordan averaged 31.2, 6.6, 11.4 assists that year. 11.4 assists. Okay? Just remember that. Like, you all say Jordan doesn't pass the ball. Clearly, Jordan passes the ball in the playoffs. He may not pass the ball a lot in the regular season, but he's definitely passing the ball in the playoffs. 92, he just comes out and scores and murders people. Jordan murdered people. And this is also the first year that Scottie Pippen made a play a all-star as well. Or I guess it's not the first time. It's the second time that Pippen's made all-star as well. So then Jordan comes out against Miami with a 45, nine, six line, 9.7 rebounds, 6.7 assists, averaged 45 points. Like, yeah, you got the Knicks 31.3, 5.7, 4.3, he pretty much took, you know, didn't pass the ball. But if you look at the 91, 92, 91 and the 92 playoffs, okay, you have 91 and 92. Grant is still the second best player on the team, okay? Grant in 91 and 92 is the second best player on the team. All right. And Jordan made those. It was just crazy of how they did that. So, like, Jordan was a 4.1 win share, 3.3, and Pippen was a 3. Grant was 3.3, and Pippen was a 3.1. So, Jordan, Grant, and Pippen was a three-headed monster. So, that's where Jordan's got the better teammates. Because even in 92-93, you got Jordan, 17.2, 9.1, and even, like, their VORP. I mean, Pippen's best VORP in the playoffs was 91-92 at a 2.0. He never topped a 2 in the playoffs ever again. Okay. Grant is... Horace Grant is very underrated. Very underrated. And he was constantly in that one to two range in the playoffs where you want him to be. Like, Horace Grant is by far one of the most underrated basketball players ever that I'm for what he did. Okay, so then 92 93. So 92 93, they play the Suns. Okay, and we're going to get to some game scores here. Well, we'll talk about this one. And about, uh, let's see, where's, I got to find it. Sorry, I got like, 
All right, right here it is. So the 9293 Suns Bull Series. Okay. Um, Jordan just goes off in that series. He has a 29.6 game score. It's the highest of his career. Previously, it was 29.4. Okay. Pippen was a 15.6, Grant a 12.8, and 11.2. So, like, Pippen showed up at times in the finals. Those first three finals, Pippen showed up. <coughs> Sorry. Because against the Lakers, he was a 17.5 game score. So, yeah. So, Pippen showed up in the finals three straight years. But that Bulls Blazers series, yeah. I know I'm jumping around a lot here. My ADD's kicking in a little bit. So it was the ninety so basically the Bulls don't get three the first three championships without Jordan. Okay? Cause he had game scores of twenty nine point four, uh twenty five point eight, and twenty nine point six. So basically the offense and everything went through Jordan that time so this is going to be all pre um pre baseball okay but grant still by far the second best player on the team in the regular season and in the playoffs just an fyi because even 92 93 he's getting he has a 2.4 win share and a 1.9 vorp jordan's got a 2.7 of vorp like grant's right there behind jordan <laughs> like is like right there all right, now, everybody talks about what the Bulls did after Jordan left for baseball. Okay, here's the deal. This team was already established, as we can tell. Like, if you take Jordan out of the equation, Pippen steps up a little bit more, Grant steps up a little bit more, and do they make do they make a run into the, into the finals like they did? No, they don't. This team doesn't make the pl- finals without Jordan those first three years. End of story, okay? So, 93-94, Jordan leaves to go play baseball. Dad passed away. Sad time in his life. Goes and plays baseball. Pippen comes over. He's going to take... He's like, I'm the guy. Well, you're not that great of a guy because your 11.2 win shares and your 6.8 VORP is not much different than what you had any other time in your career. So, he really didn't step up that much. So, he's still playing... Jordan's a... Pippins is a great second guy, but they didn't have that guy that could take it over. Grant was still a 10.0 and a 3.9. So Grant, his numbers kind of went down went down without Jordan, but not much. I mean, and then you had Armstrong step up. He had a 7.5 win share and a 1.3 warp. And Kerr it was a 6.1 and a 1.5 warp. So you had four guys that, you know, are there. So then... But in the playoffs, this is where they shrink again. They weren't, I mean, again, they're not playoff because you got a 1.2 and a 0.7, a 1.7 and a 0.7. Like, yeah, that team made it to the second round and lost. Like, that's where that should have team would have won. The previous three teams without Jordan would have done the same thing. Then you got the 94 95 Bulls. Pippen still playing Pippen things, 11.8 and a 7. Point. Like, that's solid. Is it? But then you got you add in, you throw in Kukoc, who now replaces Grant at a ten point oh and a four point one, so that's pretty equal. Armstrong stepped it up a little bit at an eight point one, but his warp was a one point one. So I mean, or one point three. Then you got Kerr at a five point nine win share and a one point four. I mean, Jordan comes back in the playoffs and is the best warp player at a one point oh. And win shares at a 1.3. So then you go with the 95 96. Okay. 95 95 95 96 season. Jordan leads his team to a championship. Okay. But he had a 4.7 win shares. Pippen's kind of stepped up. However, the game score this is the kicker. This is where I say they give the MVP to the winning team. To a player on the winning team. Because Jordan was not the best player in this Bulls Sonic series. Sean Kemp was. Okay. If it was not for Dennis Rodman, the Bulls lose to the Sonics. Just saying. Okay. That's one knock against Jordan. Okay. He was not the best player in that series. 
Then you go with the Bulls versus the Jazz, and it was basically the Jordan and Pippen show, 96-97. Um, let's see. So, oops. Dooby dooby doo. Yeah, so 96-97, you got Jordan with an 18.3 win share, Pippen with a 13.1, Kerr 7.5, Kuchot 6.9, they went 69-13, and 72-10 oh, and 10 was the year before. So when Jordan comes back, he's more of a team player. His, his, his win shares is kind of like, he's kind of spread the love out to everybody else. He's not being as dominant as he was before baseball. And I don't, and I want to talk about the what the Bulls did after Jordan left for the final time because this is when they did a complete teardown of the team, okay? Because that's where we should really be talking about it, not the '95 team or the '94 team. Like that team was already going to make playoffs anyway without Jordan. It was already it was already built that way, okay? But after that, the Bulls completely tore it down, okay? 13 and 37, 17 and 64, 15 and 67, 21 and 61 for the next four years. Okay. Jordan was the best player in every finals except for one. Um, and Jordan went against 34 different all-stars in his time in the, in the playoffs as well. Okay. So let's go to LeBron. Jordan had better te- so right now Jordan's got good teammates and you want to know and I'm going to tell you this a lot of people point to that 06 07 team with the uh with Braun and here's the thing okay Braun was good okay early on in his career he just wasn't Jordan good that's all I'm saying all I'm saying is Braun was not Jordan good because so Braun's first year in the league he had a 5.1 win share and a 2.9 VORP okay he did have the tightest VORP on the team but Boozer was the leader of that first team then you had Braun and you had Gooden and you had Elgowskis okay those are the three guys and you're like well that's Elgowskis and Gooden like yeah but Braun only accounted for 14.3 of those win shares and a 9.1 uh, VORP. He, had a, he did have a 9.1 VORP though. So, he carried that team. But his win share, like, so, so that's, what, that, so that's where it's twofold. Like, you can look at win shares and you can look at VORP, but it's whichever one you want to go off of. I'm looking at both. You got 16, and then his third year, he's 16.3 and a 9.4. Elgowskis is still a 2.1 and a 1.0. So, Jordan had, so he actually has starters on his team. Guys that should be starting in the league, guys that should be all-stars in the league, okay? But LeBron's still setting himself above the rest. And then, uh, he saw in 06, 07, a 13.7, a 6.6, a 6. So, in 07, that 07 team was pretty much spread out. And even in the playoffs, wasn't that, I mean, LeBron had a 2.2. Yeah, he carried his team. But it's that 07 team is not as bad as everybody thought it was. Does Jordan still have better teammates? Yes. Jordan still has better teammates. That's all I'm saying. So we're going to have to give the nod to Braun, who carried worse teammates farther. Let's put it. Well, yeah. So you had... Right, because you had, uh, where is it at? Jeez, man. Yeah, so you had, definitely had Braun with the better teammates. Oops, there we go. Because Jordan's worst teammates... I mean, I wouldn't even say Braun had better teammates. I would just say 
you know what? Braun was actually better than Jordan, uh, according to VORP. Because his, well, his first year, Jordan had a higher VORP. Well, throwing out the second year, and then a 10.6 and a 9.1. They're probably about even. And then Jordan had a 12.5. Yeah. And 11.4. Braun had a 9.5, 8.1, 9.8. LeBron hit 11.8 finally in, in 2008, 2009 when they went 66 and 16. And so, which, I mean, and let's pick and choose. I mean, do we want to pick and choose? Because, yeah, you can say that 017 was, was one of the most horrible teams ever, but they went 50 and 32 that year. And if you look at... I mean, you want to take LeBron's or Jordan's 47 and 35 year. He had an 11.4 vote. Grant had a one. Pippen had a one and a half. And Paxson had a point three. Meanwhile, over here, you got Braun at 8.1. You got Ilgauskas at a 1.3. Verja at 1.1. And Gooden at a one point. So, yeah. Like, all starters. I mean, yeah. So, they're, I guess their teammates when they started really winning kind of equal out is what it really does. I mean, even when you look at Braun and let's see, Braun and Wade and Bosch, like they never get to, Oh, well, yeah. I mean the, so the Braun Wade and Bosch scenario is about even with Scott Wade and or Scotty and Mike or Scott or Mike and Horace Grant like those three guys and Rodman wasn't that big of an influence either as much as everybody thinks he was in the 97 98 was the only year that he was actually any good and Kukoc was the second best player on there in Vorp with a 3.0 so, I mean, and then at this point, so when LeBron started winning his championships, he had the better teammates, according with Vorp. Okay, if we were gonna go off Vorp, they had he had the better teammates. The win shares were not as distributed like they were with LeBron. Accounted for more win shares, is what I'm saying. Um, where with the VORP, they were, LeBron's teammates were way better than uh, Jordan and Pippen. Like, Bosh, Wade, and Braun. Bosh and Wade are better than Pippen and Grant. Or Pippen and Rodman. Let's go that route as well. Like, so, you can't really go there with that like yeah he took the Cavs teams really sucked and he made them really good okay I granted that but the Heat teams those those were better than uh, his supporting cast was better than Jordan's supporting cast okay and then you go back to the Cavs he still is, has a better supporting cast than what Jordan did as Irving's got a 4.2 VORP and Love's got a 3.0 VORP and he lucked out on some championships I ain't kidding you. Like, LeBron should have probably at least one more championship. Maybe two. Two. He should at least have two more championships. So that puts him at six. And I say that because in the 2014 series, Wade doesn't show up. All right? And they lose to the Spurs. LeBron had a 22 and a half game score. The next closest was Bosch at a 10.6. Wade was a 7.9. As we said, a game score, 10 is your average, okay? The 2015 season, Irving played one game. And if he would have continued to play that series, and then they also had no love as well, if he would have had love in Irving, he wins that series over the Warriors. Because LeBron had a 24.6 a 24 game score, and Irving had a 21.1 in that one game. And then you had Mozgov and Thompson, 11.8 and 11.2, which best Curry, Iguodala, Green, and Thompson. So that's why I say there's at least two more championships. Okay. 
2016, they obviously win. They actually had the two best players in that series with Braun and Irving. The Cavs losing to uh, the Warriors in 17. You got Braun with a 29.6 game score and Durant a 30.3. Man. And then Curry had a 24.1. Like, that 2017 Warriors team is going to beat any team ever assembled. You can at me on that, too. I don't care. And then uh, 2018, Durant was a 26.9 game score. Braun had a 28.3. But then they still had Curry, Green, and Thompson. Meanwhile, Braun stuck with Love, Nance, and Smith. So LeBron's... So LeBron has done more with less when he's on the Cavs and done more with more when he was on the Heat. Let's put it that way. Okay. And so far, LeBron has faced better competition. Okay. Like, by far. Like, I'll give you the game scores. Here's the Here's the game scores. Of the finals. That's like I said, that's what I'm basing this off of is playoffs. Your your personal accomplishments in the regular season doesn't mean squat to me because everybody can I mean we could, if we want to do that, then let's throw George Gervin, Bernard King, Pete Maravich all out there as the greatest player of all time. We know they're not, okay? So Braun had had to go against a thirty point three Durant, a twenty four point one Curry a 10.1 game score, Thompson, and a 9.5 green. Then he had to follow it up again the next year with a 26.9 Durant, a 20.1 Curry, a 13.7 green, and a 9.6 Thompson. Then he, when he won against the Heat, he had to go against a 27.7 Butler. So, <coughs> and he won that one. So again, LeBron's never been, has hasn't been the best player in... His first series with the, his first finals with the Cavs, he only had a ten point six, and Gooden was a nine point zero. Like they said, that that team that O seven team was very solid, was a f- more solid team than everybody thinks. Okay, and then so he wasn't the best player there because Parker had a sixteen point two, Duncan was a five point three or a fifteen point three, and Ginobili was eleven point six. The Cavs the Cavs are just overwhelmed. The two thousand eleven Heat, you got. Braun at a 13.7. Wade was a 22.7. So Wade showed up that Braun didn't. Bosch was a 10.9. Okay. That's another thing I found out is Bosch is like good. Bosch has just never been great. So I guess that kind of waters things down too. So then you have Dirk at a 16.6. Jason Terry at a 13.4. Chandler at 11. And Marion at a 10. So... The top four players versus these top floor players, it's very equal. However, the maps came out on top. You know, that's how that works out. Then you have the 2012 Heat. You got James at a 23.6. Wade at a 16.4. Bosch at 11.9. Battier showed up with a 9.3. Meanwhile, Durant and Westbrook were at a 20.7 and 18.9. So, he's playing two of the best players. The Thunder just didn't have any help. And that's not a knock against LeBron. Like, Thunder made the championship that year, even though it was a shortened season. Then you got the Spurs Heat. Bronze the best player again. Obviously, they win. Uh, Wade's a 14.9. Bosch is a 12.1. So, like I said, those Heat teams are very similar to the Jordan Bulls teams. Okay. Because you got Jordan with a 29 and a 17 for Pippen and a 13 for Grant. And then you got Paxson at a 12. So Paxson showed up at that playoffs in 99-1. So, yeah. So, the, that's, yeah. Because Jordan, Jordan never had, only had one, out of the top three players, there was only one final series where Jordan had somebody under, uh, under 10. And that was Tony Kukoc in 96-97 at a 6.7. That was their, thir- that was their third best player. Okay, but they're going against Malone and Stockton, and Jordan by far was the better player, and Pippen was too, uh, against Stockton, anyways. So yeah, so right, Jordan never had a face, never faced anybody like what LeBron has. 
I mean, so like if you compare the 11 Mavs to the, you can compare the 11 Mavs to basically the 92 Trailblazers. You can compare that Thunder team to the the 91 Lakers. You can compare that Spurs team to, I don't know, the uh, the Jazz. You can compare that other Spurs team to the Jazz again. Um, that Warriors team that LeBron lost to, you can compare that to, you know, the Blazers. The other Warriors team that LeBron beat, uh, compare that to the Blazers as well. Like, but then you can't compare any of the last three teams he played against to anyone that Jordan played. All right. Now, let's go with this. All right. So, Jordan had 14 teammates with an 8 plus win share, okay? LeBron had a 7 had 17 teammates with an 8 plus win share. So Lebr- like I said LeBron LeBron's teammates weren't as bad as everybody thinks they are. And that's the point that I'm making on the teammates. Is LeBron wasn't as bad as they were. Now, after LeBron left, the Cavs go 19 and 63, 21 and 45 and 24 and 58. So, it, uh, LeBron played against 49 different All-Stars. Okay. Jordan played against only 34. And like I said, I'm not even counting them twice. LeBron played more against more All-Stars. And I understand that's fan voting, but a lot of the fans picked the best players. That's all there is to it. Okay. So, now let's go with playoffs. Here's the playoff scenario. Let's break it down. Jordan averaged 33.1, 33.4 points each playoffs. LeBron was a 28.7. Rebounds. Jordan averaged 6.4. LeBron was a 9. Assists. 5.7 to a 7.2. Steals. 2.1 to a 1.7. Blocks. They were the same. 0.9. Turnovers. 3.1 and a 3.7. Minutes played. They played about the same amount of minutes. 41.8 to 41.5. They shot about the same on field goal percentage at 48.7 and 49.4. Three-point percentage is still 33 and 33. Free throws, 82 and 74. However, Jordan's VORP was a 24.7. LeBron's, 33.9. Win shares. Jordan accounted for 39.8 win shares of his, for his team. LeBron, 55.7. Usage, 35 and 32. LeBron's getting used less than the playoffs. True shooting, 56.8 and 58.3. Offensive win shares, Jordan was a 27.3. LeBron accounted for 38.2. And then you want to say LeBron doesn't play defense. And Jordan did because he has one defense player of the year. Defensive win shares. LeBron 17 and a half Jordan 12.4 LeBron made a bigger impact on his playoff teams than Jordan just saying and again I'm not even a LeBron guy everybody knows this I'm not a LeBron guy I'm just stating stating the I am just stating the stats folks all right now you want to say here's another thing another knock well Jordan played only 15 years LeBron's played for I don't know what 20 Okay, let's go with a 15-year to 15-year career. Shall we? We shall. So, if you go off based off a of 15-15 career, you still have LeBron. Jordan scored 30.1, LeBron 27.3, rebound 6.2 to 7.7, 5.3 to 7.5, steals 2.3 to 1.5, they each average a .8 block. Jordan had 2.7 turnovers per game, while LeBron has 3.5. True shooting, LeBron's the better shooter. On true shooting, 56.9 and 59.9. Three points better than Jordan. Well, he equates probably to one extra, you know, probably equates to at least one extra bucket somewhere. Usage, 30, Jordan was used 33.3% of the time. LeBron, LeBron 31.8. Win shares, 214 for Jordan. 213.9 to Braun. Very close. 
so they each have, for a 15 year career they have the same win shares now the 15 year career I took out was LeBron's first three years right yeah his first three years so LeBron's been in the league for 18 years going to be 19 okay Vorp again Vorp is the one that is the one constant here Jordan had a 116.1 Vorp LeBron a 121.1 Vorp <clears throat> so even on a 15 year career basis bronze value above replacement is more than Jordan is what is that 10 10 wins above Jordan oh my gosh my mind is blown people like you have not you have no idea how much my mind is freaking blown right now after doing all this info I got nothing else I mean I have absolutely zero else if you want to throw at me I got about 22 pages worth of info here that I did okay on teammates on everything so if you want to come at me find me on Twitter you want to say here better yet how about this LeBron's opponents record in the playoffs winning percentage was 635 Jordan's was a 65-7. So again, they played about the same amount of quality of teammate of opponents. Jordan went seven and two and against sixty plus one teams. LeBron went three and five. Okay, no big deal. They go six and four and six and five against fifty five plus one teams. Seven and one and seven and one. Eight and zero. Oh. Bron had fifteen and zero. Oh. So yeah, that's fine. Say, well, he played weaker opponents. You know what? It doesn't matter, folks. It just doesn't. When the when it mattered the most, he played tougher opponents. <coughs> he played tougher opponents in the playoffs. In the finals. That's when it mattered most. Pippen, sorry for you, bro. You shouldn't be a Hall of Famer. Horace Grant should be in the Hall of Fame. That's all there is to it. Bosh shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame either. You're, I mean, Wade is better than Pippen. Bosh is better than Rodman for crying out loud like that's just how it is it's just wow just wow Pippen's not that great folks I'm glad I could solve that problem as well on this thing so all right thank you to basketballreference.com for the stats you compile so I could do this podcast and finally put this debate to an end I was able to cram 14 hours worth of research and do a what hour and a half podcast that's got to be some kind of record right so follow me on twitter one guy with a mic follow me on tiktok one guy with a mic you're gonna get more sports history for me on basketball and baseball we're gonna do more of these like podcasts because these are fun to me and i hope these are gonna be and i know they're gonna be fun to you because i think there's players people forget as always, wherever you're listening to me at, hit that follow button, hit that bell to make sure you're notified when I drop podcasts. And coming from a guy that really dislikes LeBron James, LeBron James is the GOAT. Enough said. The facts, the stats, State the facts. LeBron's the GOAT. No matter what you think anymore. Whatever you think is done. It's over. Would I t- Since they both play two separate positions, guess what? I'm taking them on my team, though. I'm going to have Jordan as my shooting guard, and I'm going to have LeBron run small forward or the point forward because I know he's going to get Jordan the ball. Like, he's going to... So, yeah. But... Oh, and you guys want to talk about clutch. They're about the same. I didn't get that stat all the way out, but I just I know they're they're about the same. There's only a few it's only a few extra things different. It's not that big of a deal. Like if you if you're talking about one or two points, it's not that huge, I'm telling you. So LeBron's the GOAT, end of discussion. And if your friends want to argue you still that Jordan's the GOAT, tell them to come listen to an hour and a half podcast of how I break down everything. I'm out. Have a great day.
deuces. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. The Pigskin Tales podcast is all about the lesser known pro football players. Yes, there are stories about the ones we know, like Brad Tarkenton and Harold Red Grange. But have you ever heard of Ernie Nevers? How about Dave Osborne or even Grady Alderman? These men created their own path to the NFL. How did they do it? Listen to the Pigskin Tales podcast. Now streaming on your favorite music platform. Go to pigskintales.com. How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.